Today's video is string theory is nonsense. String theory is what happens when you put mathematicians in charge of physics. You get mathematical nonsense that has nothing to do with physical reality. You certainly, you can solve n-dimensional problems using an n-dimensional problem solving space. That's fine. But in physics, you have to match things up with reality. You can't use 10, 11, 26 dimensions just because you feel like it. Now, to go back historically, we ended up with string theory starting with Kaluza and Klein theory, the Kaluza-Klein theory, in which they attempted to combine relativity theory with electromagnetic theory in a five-dimensional, a four plus one equals five-dimensional problem solving space with the three dimensions and time being the four dimensions from relativity and adding an additional dimension to cover the electromagnetic effects. Although in reality you have to treat electromagnetic problems as three dimensional problems as well in a time space. So when you do the maximal stress energy tensor you have to use all three plus one dimensions anyway. So the question came about with the clues of Klein theory is, well, where's this extra dimension? Why don't we see it? What, what is it? And they came up with the idea originally, well, maybe it's curled up and it's curled up so small we don't see it and you get these two tubular-like strings with this really tiny extra dimension that's hidden from us. That's why we don't observe it. We only see three physical dimensions plus time. And so that's where string theory came from. That's where the strings evolved from. And then you had to add the strong force, and you had to add the weak force, and which added a couple more dimensions or more, depending on how you arrange the problem. And so then we add more and more dimensions and we get M theory and Brand and Brands and 26 dimensional string theory and supersymmetry and all the other varieties that mathematicians have cooked up that have nothing to do with the real physics. And the basic problem with physics, the problems, one, they never bother to think of where do the dimensions and time come from? These are emergency property, properties of something. They're physically real. They're physically real properties. They emerge somehow from somewhere. And we need to know how in order to do the real physics. Well, the number one suspect for where they emerge from is quantum field theory, not from space. And quantum fluctuations that make up the quantum fields have wavelengths and frequencies. Wavelengths mean physical dimensions. Frequencies mean time. The frequency is cycles per second. So you have to have time and dimensions in order to have quantum fluctuations. And every particle and every wave through a particle medium has wavelengths and frequencies. So everything that's physically real has wavelengths and frequencies so they have distance and time. And it all starts with the quantum field. But the quantum field is an electromagnetic phenomenon. It's not a space phenomenon. And so it has an electromagnetic origin, which means that relativity is really an electromagnetic phenomenon, if it's done properly. So you don't need to add another dimension to combine relativity theory with quantum field theory. You just need quantum field theory that accounts for the relativity. You need to work the problem back the other way. Which interestingly enough, Einstein started out doing in the 1907 to 1912 time frame. And then he realized that it doesn't work with special relativity and he'd have to change his special relativity theory and rather than do that, he came up with mathematical nonsense that led to his form of general relativity, where space mag magically has its own emergency properties, emergent properties of dimensions and time, 
coming from who knows where and changed by who knows what mechanism. As I said, if you have emergency properties from quantum field theory, then we know where they come from and we know what the mechanisms are. It's much simpler physics. And then, when we come to the strong force, if you actually consider protons, protons scatter particles at their charge radius, which means they also must scatter quantum fluctuations. If they scatter quantum fluctuations, they participate in the Casimir effect. And if you calculate the Casimir effect between two protons, it's the same range in energy as the strong force. You get two protons being pushed together by the quantum fluctuations. It can be a hundred times stronger than the Coulomb repulsion. This is really simple physics. Casimir effects really established physics. This makes the strong force an electromagnetic phenomena and part of the electromagnetic equations. And then when we go to weak interactions, the weak force actually isn't a force. It's really just interactions. And the most important of these are the beta decay, particles decaying in various forms. And those are all pretty much based into a neutron becoming a proton plus an electron, or a proton plus an electron becoming a neutron. And the simplest way to see that happening is, is you, if you have a neutron, an electron-positron quantum fluctuation nearby, the positron can interact with the neutron, changing it to a proton, and then the electron can become free at a distance. This is just a quantum fluctuation interaction. It has, it's not a force at all. And it's definitely not the weak force as imagined in the standard model. And then we can do it the other way. If you have a proton and an electron and you get a quantum fluctuation in between, the positron and the quantum fluctuation can annihilate the free electron, leaving the quantum electron inside the proton. And you end up with a neutron. And so it looks like the electron is jumped into the proton and given us a neutron. And that effect is mediated by quantum fluctuation. It's not a force. So you don't need to add dimensions to add the strong force or the weak force, or a weak interaction, as it is. And you don't have to add dimensions at all. The electromagnetic forces and all of quantum field theory can be accounted for in three physical dimensions plus time. Time is not a physical dimension because frequencies are not wavelengths. Remember that. Frequencies are not wavelengths, so time is not a physical dimension. So what do we do? There is a single equation that's similar to the relativistic equation called the Maxwell Stress Energy Tensor. And it's possible the Maxwell Stress Energy Tensor combines all four of the Maxwell's equations, which are actually Heaviside's equations, into a single equation. And in order to make it account for relativity, you have to change the tensor matrix a little bit to account for the electromagnetic effects uh, due to matter. And I've talked about those in some other videos. I won't go in detail here. So you come up with a modified version of the Maxwell Stress Energy Tensor. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like. And that's it. That is your unified field theory that accounts for quant not only quantum field theory, it accounts for relativity, strong force, and the weak interaction, and everything else. You don't need string theory to do any of this. It's really simple. And string theory is nonsense. It's, like I said, a bunch of mathematicians who don't know physics and get lost in their mathematics rather than being physicists who figure out the physical origin of the properties and from there figure out what math is needed to go with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, please like, share it with your physicist friends, and subscribe so you can see my next videos. And I also have some papers I've written. I'll, I'll link a couple papers on, on the 
Maxwell Stress Energy Tensor and how you combine all these. And I will, I also discuss this a little bit in my books on quantum field theory, the zero point universe, and also my particle theory book on the um, goodbye quarks, the onion theory. So you can buy one of my books and learn more about quantum field theory and then particle theory and and you also helped me out in my retirement as since I'm a retired independent researcher producing independent content for your enjoyment and learning experience. So thanks for watching.